Hello, everyone. I'm Alicia Acuna, along with Guy Benson, Lisa Booth, and Dr. Mark Siegel. And welcome to The Big Weekend Show. The big story tonight, the mystery over Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin's hospitalization. No one knew about his medical situation, including his number two. And she wasn't the only one in the dark for days. So was President Biden. Fox News correspondent Lucas Tomlinson is live in Washington, Delaware, Wilmington, Delaware tonight. Excuse me, Lucas. There's now a bipartisan effort in Congress to get some answers. That's right, Alicia, and we still don't know why Austin has been in the hospital for nearly a week, including a stint in the intensive care unit. President Biden didn't even know for more than three days, and many Republicans are outraged the defense secretary was missing in action. Apparently, the National Security Council didn't know it. The White House didn't know it. Congress didn't know it. We're at a time of a lot of turmoil internationally, and suddenly have the secretary of defense more than just a matter of wasn't there actually sent over false information saying I'm working from home when he's not actually available at all. Now, here's the timeline, Alicia. Late Friday, the Pentagon released a vague statement saying Austin was admitted to Walter Reed last Monday for complications following elective surgery on December 22nd. The nature of that surgery remains unknown. At one point, Austin became so ill, he was rushed to the ICU. His authorities were then delegated to his deputy, who is on vacation in Puerto Rico. Officials say even she didn't know Austin was in the hospital. The U.S. military has continued to battle Iran's proxy forces in the Middle East in his absence. Both GOP and Democratic leaders of the House Armed Services Committee are demanding answers. Quote, Transparency is vitally important. Secretary Austin must provide these additional details on his health and the decision-making process that occurred in the past week as soon as possible. That's Pentagon Argo for ASAP. And there's also been criticism from Democrats as well as the former vice president. The handling of this by the Secretary of Defense is totally unacceptable. I think it was a dereliction of duty and... Uh, uh, and, uh, and the secretary and the administration, frankly, need to step forward uh, and give the American people the facts. He does have a duty uh, to uh, keep the public informed. We're told President Biden spoke to his defense secretary last night to wish him a speedy recovery. And Alicia, I'm glad you have a doctor on set tonight to explain all this. Alicia? You've got that exactly right, Lucas Tomlinson. Thank you so much. And we're going to go to the good doctor here in just a second. But first, I want to read a statement that we have received from the Pentagon. It reads, Secretary of Defense Lloyd J. Austin III remains hospitalized at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center, but is recovering well and is in good spirits. While we do not have a specific date for his release at this time, we will continue to provide updates on the secretary's status as they become available. Dr. Siegel, first of all, welcome um, to the big weekend show for the first time. We're so happy to have you here. Great to be what here. What incredible timing. Um, what does this statement say to you about the situation that the, the secretary finds himself in? And then further, we understand he's a very private person, but really, is that a place for this right now? I don't think patient privacy covers this at all. I think the first question is a non-medical one, which is, what did the Defense Department know? What did they tell the White House? I mean, this isn't like a week when nothing went on, Alicia. I mean, you had a drone strike occurring in Baghdad, taking out an Iranian-based Iranian leader. You have, you have the Houthis saying, to, after, after their 25th attack, that they're now in battle with the United States. And where's the Defense Secretary? Now, what might have happened, even now, and Lucas was hinting at this, how about now some full disclosure? You know, the American public could learn from this that when you go in for an elective procedure, whatever it was, at the age of 70, there are complications. Cataract operations, and I'm not saying he had one, three and a half million of them done a year, about 1% end up with a medical complication. Public needs to know that. Colon polyps, medical complications occur. Hernias, medical complications occur. Cosmetic surgery is the number one thing. And Lisa and I were talking about this. Could it have been a cosmetic procedure? He's embarrassed about something? He, he needs to be embarrassed now. Yeah, all questions that none of us would be asking if they just would have been, you know, disclosed that he was going in for an elective procedure from the beginning. None of this would be happening, which I'm sure in hindsight makes sense now. Um, so, Guy... So many questions, so many issues, but mm -hmm. and, and so many questions about what's going on with the communication at the Pentagon, right? And also, did no one or did someone, and they were shut down, say, um, the defense secretary is in the ICU, someone call the president. 
Who loses their job over this? Does someone, where does it begin? It's a good question, and I think it's important to note, and the doctor just alluded to it, in the statement that Austin or his people put out, I believe, yesterday, he pledged to do better on transparency moving forward. Here we are on Sunday night. We still don't know what happened, so they're not doing any better. I don't want to be melodramatic about this, but they put out a lie, apparently, that he was working from home. That is not true. His acting secretary, who took over the job while on vacation, didn't know that he was in the hospital. Neither did people up and down the chain of, uh, chain of command. So there are some serious problems here. There's a breach of trust. There is very poor judgment on his part. And now he is creating a multi-day embarrassment for his boss. And, excuse me, and for an administration that can't afford one politically right now. I am not saying he's going to resign, but I think you might start to hear more calls for it because that is a tough combination. Breach of trust, bad judgment, embarrassing the president, and he is the secretary of defense. He's not, with all due respect, transportation or commerce or something like that. He runs the Pentagon. Six he runs the the, six in line for the presidency. He runs the most powerful military in the world, and we still, to my first point, don't know what happened. It's crazy. Yeah, and you know, Lisa, across the board, uh, when you look at the way um, that this has been covered, right? You look at the headlines. Media has been pretty tough on this. If we, we do have some of the, the headlines we can take a look at, Politico playbook, what was Lloyd Austin thinking at The Atlantic? Lloyd Austin owes Americans an explanation. Newsweek, Lloyd Austin leaving Biden in dark over hospitalization raises questions. Um, but you still have questions. Well, I was telling the doctor that if this ever happens to me at his age, I probably got a facelift. <laughs> I don't think that's what happened here. My guess was it was something that he thought would be quick. He'd be back in action. No one would know about it. And then that's not what happened. And, and here he is answering these questions. But to your point, yeah, normally the, the media coverage is, oh, Republicans are pouncing. In this case, everyone is pouncing, including, you know, bipartisan condemnation. You have this letter uh, from the ranking member of the House Armed Services Committee, as well as Chairman Mike Rogers, criticizing the secretary of the media piling on as well. But my question is, you know, this is what they decide to finally hold the administration accountable on? I mean, you look at all the lies that this administration has told us, particularly when it comes to foreign policy. I mean, you look at the, bo the botched withdrawal from Afghanistan. They wouldn't even ID the suicide bomber because it, it was a prisoner that was released from the Bagram Air airfield, and they didn't want that out in the public. They tried concealing a Chinese spy balloon that was flying around the United States collecting intel, and it was only because of a newspaper photographer that took a photo that it got out, so they're going to lie to us about that. They also try to gaslight the American people about that $6 billion that was released to Iran, trying to tell us, oh, no, it's not going to terrorism, even though money is fungible. So they lie about everything. So it's like this, this well, is finally what, you know, we decide to collectively condemn them about. It, why do you think that is, Guy, that this, this is the moment? Maybe because they're like, this is kind of a safe one and he's politically more expendable than other people. But uh, you're right about this. And... The Thank White House, this people. White House <laughs> is allergic to accountability. So maybe he will keep his job and We're, won't get in trouble for this. But it's a scandal. Look, if he had kept this just from the public, that would be a scandal. But he kept it also from Congress and senior leaders there. That's adding to the scandal. And then worst, I think, from the White House perspective, the president, the national security advisor, the person who was actively doing the job, none of them knew this. It's actually sort of unfathomable that this happened. Quick, two quick points, one non-medical. Kathleen Hicks, who's his number two, is excellent. She has great training. So this fumble really shows a lot about the administration, to Guy's points. They should have told her right at the beginning. And the medical point is, despite all of this, I don't want to be corny here, I wish him well. I wish him full recovery. Of course. But doesn't it also tell you about the sense of entitlement that Secretary Austin has? That he thinks that he can just do whatever he wants, that he doesn't have to be held accountable to anyone, that he doesn't have to let his own administration know or, or the president know. I mean, I, I think that really says a lot about this administration, but also about him. And well, the it's judgment like point. the arrogance. Well, well, and it's just so frightening that when he was in the ICU, that that didn't set off alarm bells around the people around him. Even if he had said, this is something that is between me and my doctor and that no one stepped in and said, no, this is actually a national security issue Can that I ask we actually need to. A medical raise. question. Let's say things got dicey there for a while. Clearly, you get rushed to the ICU. That's not good. 
By definition, does that mean he was basically incapacitated, could not do the job if you're in the ICU? If he's on a ventilator and he's totally sedated, yeah, he cannot do the job. And I don't have the feeling that he was doing the job when he was in the ICU. By the way, to Alicia's point, as awful as this is, it is between... The doctor doesn't have an obligation to come forward with this. The doctor right. has to obey patient privacy. It's the patient that I'm, that I'm astounded mm -hmm. by in the Defense Department. And by the way, we're think... speculating here because yes. they're not telling us anything. Well, yeah, but then and it makes it weirder. I mean, I say, you know, look, I wish you a speedy recovery, but don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you, you know? <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.